back, I commend this bill to the House. Thank you. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It, it is with a sense of deja vu that I rise to, to speak to this bill, and again with a sense of disappointment at an opportunity lost. Now, the Minister, when she speaks in this House around the changes that she's introducing to our social security system, through this bill does so in what might seem a calm and rational way, and yet it's quite different to the same old mantra that we sometimes hear from that minister when she speaks publicly on issues around social security. Mr Speaker, it is time for us to stand up against the politicking that happens every time we discuss social security or welfare out in the wider public. I feel like Labour, in fact, has nothing to lose on this debate. National uses this area as a political football and characterises parties like Labour in a particular way during that process. But that is minor. That is minor when you look at the, the way that that party instead characterises the people who legitimately need and use social security in this country. And I can get mad from a moral perspective, but my anger actually comes from the place around what does that characterisation then do to us and our ability as politicians to make the changes to the system that we need to make. Every time National characterises those who use Social Security the way they do, they make it harder for us to do our job. Now, let me give you an example. What are the, in the public's mind, what are the reforms that they know about through this bill? Drug testing. They know about seeking people who have warrants for arrest whilst on welfare. They know about fraud and stand-down periods for saying no to taking up jobs. And those are the messages that the National Party then sends out about those who are using Social Security in New Zealand. And then today, perfect example then of the contradiction and the corner that government then backs itself into. We have the Prime Minister writing to employers asking them to take on young people who have, committed, who have committed themselves to the limited service volunteer program, who are on government support, asking those employers to take them on. But within the next breath, he's telling them they're drug takers, they've got warrants out for their arrest, and they're committing fraud. You cannot have it both ways. Order. It is time to call time out on the politicking around social security. And Labor is calling the government out on the way that it treats this system. There is no doubt, Mr Speaker, that we can improve social security in New Zealand on behalf of those who are currently using the system. And Labor, though, has a set of values it will always stick to when it looks to reform in, that, in this area. And that is the lens from which we view legislation like this. And the first point is Labor has always been the party of work. We were the architects of Social Security, and for us, we will always hark back to the foundation principles behind Social Security. And when Michael Joseph Savage established it, he said, Social Security will never be an armchair ride to prosperity. It must always be looked at alongside good, decent health, good, decent education, and support of all citizens. So what do we do to create a more active Social Security system? And that is what this side of the House wants to look at. And if we want to make a more active system, we need to make sure that we fulfil our side of the bargain. If we ask people to go out and seek work, which we do, if you're able to work, you should seek it, we should be making sure that jobs are available. If you want to fix welfare, fix the economy. Secondly, help prepare people for work. This bill simply implements more work testing. Work testing does not make people work ready. And we have a minister who, since she has been in government, has cut the training incentive allowance, has not allowed people to get support so that they can move into bridging courses so they can move into training. Through this bill, she's now telling people on the domestic purposes benefit, you can't be in study and be on uh, government support anymore. Now, what are those uh, young mums who are, perhaps have low skills going to do if they're going to upskill themselves and move into employment when she's telling them 
All I care about is whether you get a low-wage part-time job. doesn't matter if the government subsidises you and your child for the rest of your life because I have a narrow view of what government support is all about. That is a passive system and we don't support changes like that. We also need to treat everyone fairly but not the same. We cannot look at everyone through simply a lens of you sit within a particular benefit category and therefore the system will treat you in this particular way. Uh, on, finally, Mr Speaker, on the notion of government needing to fulfil its side of the bargain, there's no better example of that than social obligations. Here we have a minister saying if you wish to still receive government support, you must enrol your child in early childhood education, enrol in a well child provider and enrol with a general practitioner. And yet when we ask the minister, will she ensure every child can access early childhood education, her answer was no. Where is the government's obligation to fulfil its end of the bargain? Mr Speaker, we will always look at this bill through our sense of what it is we're trying to build when it comes to social security. Uh, we do support notions around simplification, which this bill talks about, but in, in the select committee process, we will be looking about what those impacts will be of simplification. It's not entirely clear what impact the merging of the domestic purposes benefit into the job seeker allowance, uh, what impact that will have in monetary terms on children, and we want to explore that question, uh, and also for those on the sickness benefit. Also, Mr Speaker, we will be delving in a lot more detail around the de de decision-making process around what categories uh, those seeking government support are placed into. We must avoid the mistakes of our international counterparts, and I have grave concerns about the, uh, the path we are travelling down. The use of outsourcing of assessment of work capacity and the ACC-style model of vocational independence assessment process bears striking resemblance to that used in the UK. The Department of Work and Pensions in the UK made use of contractors like ATOS to perform work capability assessments at a cost to the state of £300 million. Since that time, an estimated 500,000 people have been wrongly assessed, Mr Speaker. People with terminal cancer have been found fit for work. People with mental health issues have been ignored. Not only should we not lose sight of the lessons from abroad, we must apply our own values around the role of social security in our country. It's not about being too soft. It's not about being too tough. It's about doing what's right and what's fair. Now, the Minister may claim, Mr Speaker, in all of her discussion around welfare reform, and I've heard this said many, many times, that the government is in, uh, taking an investment approach. I have one question for the Minister. Demonstrate to me in tangible terms how the system is investing in people who are currently on government support. Just demonstrate to me how what you are changing about our passive social security system, which is moving people from, from government support into work. And I, and I challenge those members to demonstrate to that to me, because so far I've seen one area, and it was in the last bill. The one area where I applaud what the government did was the, ex the improvement of child support for young parents. But that was for 1,500 people, Mr Speaker, and we asked the Minister to consider extending that to the 100,000 people on the domestic purposes benefit, and that has not happened. So, government members, show me where you have done anything more than simply work test. Show me what you're doing to support those who are on the sickness benefit to become well and to move into work more than just the passive sitting back and waiting things for things to change without any kind of investment. There is nothing in this bill that does that. In fact, under this government, if anything, we have seen the small tools we had, like the training incentive allowance that the minister used, we have seen those cut. That is that government's form of an investment approach. Mr Speaker, Labour will not support this bill. It doesn't fulfil our values of an active uh, social security system that supports people into work. It doesn't fulfil the government's end of the bargain around job creation. It doesn't, it doesn't treat 
Social Security is a dignified springboard into a better life. And Mr Speaker, we are calling time on the politicking of this area because the government is doing nothing but disrespect a social security system that was built around dignity. Uh, just before I call the next member, can I advise the House uh, that robust and passionate debate is healthy and to be expected, but every time a member uses the expression you, the member is referring to the chair. In that case, it's me. And I refer members to Speaker's Rulings 27 bar 5 1. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable.